Hey everyone, Grant here from Spectre Racing. So we are back from a successful run at Carolina Motorsports Park with uh, Grid Life Time Attack. Uh, so some background on the car. Uh, I've been racing this car for 11 years now. Kind of started off with autocross, then moved into a little bit of HPD and drift. Uh, then started getting more seriously into HPD and now Time Attack. So, as you can guess, this car is heavily modified. I have the full build list on the site and uh, with every little detail you could ever imagine. But pretty much over the last 11 years, I have replaced pretty much every part. Uh, I think the only original parts is pretty much the axle. Uh, but in 2016, the car supercharged the car, which was a poor decision, but you know, it makes cool noises. But um, it was a lot of fun, but obviously, you know, causes a uh, heat soak like you hear with a lot of supercharged cars. Now, for, you know, autocross and drift and some light HPD, not really a big deal, honestly. You can just pull off track or just dial it back a bit. But when you start getting into time attack, uh, it can also not really be a big deal if you're only willing to do, you know, a few laps and then you start, uh, car starts getting a little bit hotter, pulling timing, and, uh, and your lap times aren't as good anymore. The thing is, though, is um, when you start getting into time attack and you're not doing this full time, uh, you're going to be going to a lot of new tracks. So learning a new track can be difficult. Now, I have a simulator and I'll get into uh, some of the Assetto Corsa stuff in a little bit. But um, one of the key things that I've been using is the Garmin Catalyst. And the Garmin Catalyst is kind of like an AI driven driver assistance coach thing. It's kind of like the driving line in Forza, but, uh, but it's audio. So you have a little. Uh, thing in your helmet, a little speaker, and it just tells you when you go around the track, brake later, apex sooner, carry more speed before every turn. And uh, basically it just kind of helps you out a little bit. The problem is, is it needs a few laps to calibrate, so if you're kind of going the, doing that method where you're only using one or two hot laps in time attack and then you have to pull off, Catalyst won't work. So every time you go to a new track, uh, it's kind of hard to lay down good times. You only have a few sessions entirely, especially time sessions. So. Uh, it was really important to get this problem solved. Now, obviously, you know, this is kind of my own problem that I have to solve because uh, supercharged the car. But um, uh, basically what uh, I've done here is create a dual heat exchanger system. Now, in the, uh, one of my previous videos uh, in preps for grid life, I kind of go into a little bit more into detail, but essentially the car has two... Uh, heat exchangers now. I have a small little front one uh, that's actually the original equipment on a 2009 GT500. Uh, those were actually prone to overheating and traffic and stuff as you can imagine. They have no fans or anything. What a lot of people do with these heat exchangers is that they um, they put a gigantic one in the front of their car, right? Uh, the Department of Boost sells the Titanic one, but essentially it's like 70-80 pounds in the front of your car and uh, it kind of spoils the handling. Not to mention the the front opening of the Mustang is very small, so it's I do question how much airflow, how much extra airflow you really get with the Titanic versus just putting a small one. Now, the thing is, the small one up front is not enough. So uh, instead of uh, basically running a giant one or you know overheating, not being able to run enough laps. Uh, I mounted two. So I have the original, or not the original, I have the VMP triple pass one that I've had for a while. That is now mounted in the trunk. So basically, uh, it doesn't really get a whole, uh, not the super high volume airflow you see with um, uh, up front, but what it does is it kind of removes the parachute effect in the car. So when you open the windows and you're going about 100 plus miles an hour, slam on the brakes. Uh, You'll notice like a pressure differential in some cars because all the air is kind of leaving the car. Uh, you don't really get that anymore because the air is kind of flowing through this back uh, plenum uh, that was made via Home Depot. It is not very aerodynamic, obviously, using these boxy plenums and stuff. Uh, the real point is this is more of a, this is going to create a lot more volume in the system. It's not going to get the CFM, same CFM as the up front one, but it'll get a decent amount of CFM through the system. So the other thing uh, that was done to the car is the upgraded VMP intercooler. Uh, the intercooler basically uh, is, so the car essentially has three little heat exchangers, but the intercooler is what uh, the supercharger air passes through. So that one's a little bit bigger. It really, 
volume wise it's not really a big deal but at the end the outlets and inlets are one inch versus uh, three quarter inch so you get a better flow rate especially because i have uh, the 2013 gt500 pump which is the second or third best pump you can get there's some better ones but require some um they, they really can only come to use if you use one inch lines which i'm not so back to CMP, uh, as you saw in the beginning of the video, the run was uh, pretty good. It, uh, the temperature was on the cooler side, um, but you know, later in the day, in the later sessions, it was high 70s easily. And I've run in those conditions many times before, and I've never been able to run seven plus laps. Uh, the car itself on track, uh, I think I did add a little bit too much um, Arrow, but you know, it's because a uh, first session out, uh, I noticed the car, I could barely even get into fifth <laughs> in the straightaway. But oh man, the car had oodles of grip. So I actually dialed back like the rear wing one notch, and that helped with a little bit more speed, but I was hesitant on pulling any more arrow out of the car uh, just because I had never actually been to this track with um, the car and. The surface was not perfect. The only problem running with a lot of grid life events is the surface is not going to be perfect because of all the drifters and stuff. Um, but the fun of the event kind of makes up for that. So I probably could have picked up a little bit of time, uh, maybe pulling one or two notches again out of the rear wing, but I really did love the level of grip. Um, now there is one way to get over that, and it's just adding more power to the car. Um, <laughs> So that is an option there with, you know, possibly, uh, um, I, I have a smaller pulley or whatever, but uh, it requires a new fuel system and the motor is towards the end of its life anyway, but a new fuel system uh, wouldn't preclude adding a Coyote anyway. So that's a possibility towards the end of the life of this motor. Uh, so I did a lot of practice and prep for this event in Carolina Motorsports Park in a set of Corsa. Now the only problem is, is that this uh, Carolina Motorsports Park is not in any video game, so it's a downloaded modification for Assetto Corsa, and the closest car is also, well, the closest car is actually in Forza, but Forza doesn't have CMP or the ability to modify the game. Uh, so I found an FR500S in uh, for Assetto Corsa, which is sort of close to my car. I modified the transmission ratios and everything to match my car, so the shift points were on par. I think the problem, however, is the car was a little bit too fast. I did modify it to have less power, but I'm not so sure uh, how effective the power curves and stuff in the, the game are when you modify stuff. So uh, I have... It, the car was too fast, because I could barely get into fifth in real life, whereas in the game I was doing like 130, 140 miles an hour, which was not realistic in hindsight. So the Assetto Corsa line was actually really good. The obvious problem was is that in Assetto Corsa, I was going a little bit too fast and the car was never really to be able to gain that speed. I started the weekend with like a 150, which is not very good. And then ended the weekend with a 145 with an optimal 144. I think, uh, I think if I had had another session, I definitely would have been able to have gotten down to 144 easily. You can, I can start seeing my mistakes. You know, when you've been out of track a few times, you really can pick up the time versus your first time out there with this car. I have been out to CMP before in the Tesla, which is a completely different beast. You know, basically bone stock car, essentially. Um, but uh, at the end of the day, placed mid-pack in the last dash, so I'm fairly happy with that. Uh, so coming up next in the season is going to Gingerman in Michigan. Uh, Gingerman's a little bit slower of a track. It's more like a tighter Roebling Road Raceway, if you've ever seen any of those videos on my channel. Uh, so that track, I think, will favor the Mustang a little bit better. It looks like it's going to be between third and fourth gear, based off of the simulator runs I've been doing. Uh, and that's about it. So let me know what else you guys would like to see on the channel. I'll follow up soon here, hopefully, with the video from Gingerman. And have a good one. Thanks for watching. Thank you.